going to hear from uh, Yudi Dwi uh, Koyono, um, who is the Senior Manager of Digital Bank Development at BRI, and he's going to talk about how open APIs can help redefine uh, banking product delivery. So Yudi, uh, welcome to, uh, to API Days Live Jakarta. I'm very pleased to, to, to have you here. Hi, John. How are you? I'm I'm very good, thanks. So, um, can I just check that you can share your uh, okay your slide deck now? Okay, so it's clear now. I can, it's, uh, that's that's perfect. So, yeah. please uh, please welcome Yudi, and we're we're very keen to um, to to um, hear you about uh, what you're going to share with us. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you, John. Um, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, hope you are doing well. Um, it is an honor to be here with you today, and thank you, uh, Happy Days, for having me in the states. Uh, my name is Yudi Dwi uh, I am senior manager of digital bank development and operation in uh, BRI Bank Rakyat Indonesia. And in this moment, uh, I will share about our journey, BRI journey. Uh, one of the largest bank and the, the oldest bank in Indonesia to do the uh, digital transformation especially how we exploit the open api technology to to accelerate the, the digital formation in bri and how it uh, redefined the banking product delivery to, to our customers so uh, i divide it into three sections and the first one is reasons behind banking digital formation so what is the reason why uh, bri uh, especially are in banking in indonesia need to to do the digital transformation and accelerate it in uh, in a faster way. And the second thing is, uh, uh, I will share about the BRI digital transformation journey that we have start in 2017. I think in the last three years, and what kind of digital product that they already built, and what the product that, that uh, I think I will mention about the most impacted product to uh, to us. And the last one, uh, I will tell you about the, how we orchestrating the OPI products to build the digital product and how we. We exploit the API uh, technology to redefine our uh, banking product delivery. Okay, so um, uh, let's go to the first topic and reasons behind banking digital transformation. So, yeah, this is what we are. Um, BRI is the largest network in Indonesia, and so BRI was founded in 1895, uh, which means we have been serving for more than 125 years, serving for Indonesian people and banking industry, and it is still counting. And, this infographic tell you about how uh, how big the network that we have and how it's spread across the country. And you can see on the right side that uh, we have thousands of ATM, uh, thousands of cash replacement machine, more than three hundred thousand of EDC, uh, thousands of branches offices, and even we have a three ship terrace. You know, uh, we built the office on top of the ship and. I don't know, maybe uh, we are very obsessed to be the king, not only in the land, but also in the sea. Um, and the last thing that the most important that we, we have a start light. So maybe we are uh, uh, we aren't the only bandit on the satellite. I don't know, maybe in the future, if you want to live in Mars and uh, we, leave it to, we leave it for you and just to ensure that you can withdraw your money while enjoying your life in Mars. Um, so uh, these are, are the great infrastructure, we have a great infrastructure, we have a largest network in Indonesia, but uh, some big question arise. Um, can this network um, can help us to survive in the digital era when we are doing, uh, doing anything, when when our competitors is coming not only for, from the bank, uh, but also telco industry, fintech, e-commerce, and so on and so forth. And, can this uh, infrastructure help us to, to create and generate new revenue stream, new base models, and to, to help us to, to build the innovation? Yeah, maybe someone, uh, some people say, yeah, yeah you, you can do it. But I think the, uh, the, the, the right answer is no, if we don't, if we don't, we don't do anything. Because and there are some reasons why we need to do digital formation. We, need, uh, we can't rely uh, fully on only for this uh, network that we already have. And uh, these slides uh, shows the evolution of banking. The first reason why we need to do the digital transformation. So in the left side, uh, in the picture, it is, it is a pass a pass banking model where, where the brands, uh, it is put as a center of universe. Maybe five or 10 years ago, probably bank uh, has already the call center to solve the customer problem. Um, 
customers complain, have the transaction banking, uh, internet banking, mobile apps to the transaction, mail, you know, or even phone, phone banking. But and these channels have uh, very, very limited features. I mean, in other words, you still need to go to the brands to do almost all the banking facility, uh, such as opening account, apply loan, even some complaint can be solved only in the brands. This happened in five or 10 years ago uh, as a banking model of the past. And we call it as a closed banking system era. And it is changing now, and uh, we are not in a banking model of the future. I mean, like an open banking era where um, mobile should not be seen as the basis for the entirely new banking model. That a safe that is forcing bankers to accept the branches are no longer the center of the universe. And the surrounding environment, the surrounding environment that support this uh, this model is first one is credit scoring analytic that should be done uh, automated, con opening. The no need to go to the branch. Merchants, uh, lending and credit platform, payment network, cross industry partnership, uh, open API. I can say open API that support the the partnership and the collaboration. And the last one is fintech collaboration. So you can see, and in, in the right uh, in the right side, this picture, there is no branches, no physical branches. There is no ATM, even EDC, EDC or CRM. So um, based on this picture, I can conclude that um, all of the networks that I mentioned previously. Um, potentially will give less benefit to us uh, in the future uh, or I mean in the open banking era. Well, the question is, does customers still need uh, a brand if from the device they can do all the banking transaction? Does uh, the customer still use the cash? We draw the cash from the ATM. If cashless society is happening in Asia in the future or even in 2025, I think uh, BI will be uh, will release the open banking uh, policy. So I think it will be changed in the, um, in the market, I think. And this is the, the first reason that uh, why we need uh, to accelerate the digital transformation. And the second one, I think the second biggest reason why we need to accelerate the digital transformation, yes, it is a COVID-19 pandemic where, yeah, I think uh, because this pandemic, we need to start to uh, forget how big the network that we have, forget how large the network that we have, because uh, we, uh, as a bank, uh, are forced to, to accept the new normal. So COVID-19 pandemic impact all sectors, including financial industry, especially in banking industry. So I, but uh, I assume that is the one most impacted uh, sector industry. So uh, therefore, banks will adopt the new normal financial activities that, I don't know, maybe maybe won't go back to the normal uh, after pandemic. And we found facts uh, since 2020 that the number of brands visit is declining uh, due to social distancing. So. Yes, of course. I mean, people will think many times, right, to, to go to the, to the brands because this uh, this virus. And the second fact is customer prefers to use mobile uh, online channels to do the transaction. So impacting the significant rise of transaction in mobile banking, internet banking, including Brimo, uh, our new uh, our mobile app. So uh, customer tends to do the mobile transaction only from the device, from their home. And remote working, learning school, and education, including financial activity, uh, uh, like a bills payment, opening accounts, purchasing, and other activities that should be uh, done remotely. And I think uh, based on these facts, uh, customer will leave the bank easily uh, if they cannot if they cannot support this uh, new uh, new activity, a new normal needed. So so we'll, they will think many times before they decide to go. Okay, I I just want to go to brand just so to open the, the account or to apply a loan or just to solve our complaint. So yeah. This is the biggest reason why we need to, to accelerate the digital transformation. And uh, if I take one sentence that uh, uh, impact our, our strategy approach in, in MBA, right, that maybe before pandemic, uh, we are all used to disruption, but we are not used to be uh, to the new speed of disruption because of this pandemic. This, uh, therefore, we need to, to accelerate it uh, in very fast to, to keep our, to keep, uh, our competition in the market, in the ACT market. And fortunately, um, in the last three years, uh, BRI uh, has built the foundations of digital transformation. So we have, uh, we already started that formation around 2017. And I will tell you about our digital transformation journey. So uh, we start from the strategic approach to banking digital transformation first. So, uh, I quote from my director, uh, NBR director, Indra Utoyo, that from the from his book, a hybrid company model. That 
uh, we do two streams parallelly in BRI. So our digital transformation strategy divided into stream. Uh, the first stream is digitized. That is all talking about the digital ways of digitization. So what does this stream covers? So uh, this stream will co will optimize our current business models, but we improve it uh, so it will be faster, function better. Uh, minimize the cost and deliver the better experience. And so by the end, we need to strengthen our market position, our current market position, because we, we can't forget the legacy, right? We, we, can't, we can't forget the least, uh, legacy market position as a, as a bank. And the second uh, streams that we, uh, we are talking, uh, we, are, we are doing is a digital, where we are talking about the digital business transformation when, when we start to create and explore new business models and when from this new business model, we want to generate new revenue streams, and we are exploring uh, continuously to find the new disruptive product. So uh, we don't want to be disrupted forever. We we will uh, we want to disrupt uh, by uh, publishing the the new products, new business, the new product that really really different from the traditional banking. And by the end, it uh, it will change uh, our market position in uh, in the in the competition. Uh, and this uh, some products that uh, we have built since 2018. So we successfully launched the Open API platform uh, called Briapi in 2018, where we are the first bank in bank in Indonesia to obtain the Open API license from uh, OJK or regulatory bodies in Indonesia, and move uh, to, to 2019. We built uh, at least three digital products. It's a Brispot. Pinang and Ceria. So Pinang is a digital lending which customer can apply the loan uh, directly from the device and cash will disperse uh, to the account. So they can use it as a multi-purpose loan size for paying school, taking the holiday, uh, paying the hospital and so on and so forth. And uh, meanwhile, Ceria is digital lending and can be used in the e-commerce as a source of fund, not the cash disbursement, but the, it can be used to uh, allow you to, to buy the thing from e-commerce. and. Uh, and Brispot, yeah, I think it's the part of a digitized stream where we can decrease um, the time need for the loan application. It's around maybe before we, we build the Brispot, maybe uh, two weeks to to uh, create uh, to to administer the loan application. But now uh, through the Brispot, we can do it in only in two days. Uh, and the 2020, uh, I think it's crucial response uh, during the pandemic because we. We can launch the new Brimo, our mobile apps, where we can uh, opening an open account to the uh, to the apps with the uh, with the go to the brand. So is it uh, fully automated? Uh, no need to go to the brands or video call with our staff, and it is fully digital uh, digital with EQIC and digital signature. So this is some of our product that we deliver uh, in the last three years. So, so how do we build the this the digital product? How is it? uh the uh, the building of the digital product and publish it to the market so uh first things first and i am sure all you know uh, that all of you already know that we need to see from the monolithic architecture that yeah we wish you for many years in in bri and to microservice architecture so uh why we need to save because the main weakness is in, in this monolith is hard to scale up so uh, it is hard to to decouple or take the uh, the function and transform with the new product and monetize it and that's why it uh, well, it can be covered in the microservice architecture. And uh, when building the apps, uh, uh, we will build the, the, the microservices, uh, maybe some microservices to build the apps. And we've, uh, we will design, uh, we call it as a reusable or share microservices. And then um, in the next lab, we will leverage it as open API product. So uh, this reusable or share microservice can be applied in many internal apps. So uh, so for the example, it's like credit scoring system. Uh, we we'll calculate the probability of default of our customer, ID card validation as part of KYC, uh, face recognition, fund, center, uh, fund transfer, so on and so forth. So uh, this reusable can be used by our internal developers or expose it as an open API product to third party or partners. Um, so we already have a microservices that serve particular features. Some of them are reusable and can be exploited as open API product. So what's next? Uh, how you can support uh, our digital transformation strategy that I mentioned earlier, digitized and digital. And yeah, how open API can be, uh, I mean, the, this microservice, uh, how it can help us to, to accelerate uh, 
our implementation and transformation strategy. So the first thing that we need to manage all the APIs because we already manage the hundreds of APIs, then we, we are using APG now for as an API management gateway where in this platform, we develop and manage hundreds of APIs. We put many proxy pro, uh, in this platform, such as uh, credit scoring, fee inquiring payment, AQYC, digital signature, direct debit fund transfer, uh, and many more. Uh, I just mentioned some of them, but we are, we already we already have hundreds of APIs. And uh, to, um, these APIs can be consumed both internal developers to build the internal products and and also third party when they want to consume uh, this API and integrate it with uh, into their apps. So uh, I define the these two stream like uh, support the internal developer portal is like part of digital stream and we can help them to accelerate uh, the building of their product because internal app can consume api product existing api products uh, by register to the uh, to develop a portal internal and it allows developer to focus only on core function and cut development time uh, uh, meanwhile and the digital uh, business transformation so these apis can be used can be used to explore the new disruptive digital products uh, I can mention about the Pinang and Charia where uh, use credit scoring, EQYC, and digital signature to deliver fully automated lending apps. Or, or we can expose it to the to third party or partners, uh, such as fund transfer, virtual account that consists of uh, payment, uh, inquiry, get services, uh, and they can integrate it with the apps. I mean, uh, they can use the fund transfer as a payment option in their app apps. VA as a uh, payment option also, direct debit and so on and so forth. So, of course, for this stream, this stream can generate a new revenue stream and allow to uh, partner other party to create new base model where BRI as a um, as a backend, uh, we, we call it as a backend banking for them. So, uh, this is how APIs can can support the digital transformation strategy in, in BRI. And uh, so uh, the next, uh, we need to change the way uh, we as the customer. Uh, so by leveraging the open API, we can we can build a new model how we engage, how we reach the the customer. So um, previously, as displayed in the left side, uh, we built banking products, uh, Brimo, Brispot, and uh, and other digital banking products um, to serve end user directly. Uh, but in the right side, when we built the we we we, we try to unbundle and chunk the the main feature our, uh, of our banking activities, uh, let's say like digital loan or credit card, we unbundle it as a sum of APIs product, uh, let's say customer registration, installment payment, loan application, inquiry, and we expose it uh, to the third party as well as the banking activities. So banking activities, we chunk it also to be direct debit, fund transfer, VA, find nearest brand location, top up e-wallet or breezy, account statement, opening account, and it, it, it's, it is exposed to the third party like uh, established companies, government, fintech, e-commerce, school or university. So they can consume it and integrate it with their apps. Of course, this uh, this model will expand or will extend our channel how to reach the customer. So instead of we build the single apps, the single apps that can only serve the end users. So we chunk it as a uh, separate APIs and open it into the third party partner. So they can use it uh, directly based on their, their business needs therefore therefore we, we so we can reach the their customer the party's customer without di uh, without directly talk to uh, to the end users that's why we uh, that what, what i mean about the redefining the, the product delivery so or in other words we we redefining how we reach the customer and uh this is a summary of uh, brk fintech partnership to to support digital ecosystem so very happy since 2018 we serve many so many ecosystem from the payment ecosystem e-wallet uh, sme ecosystem p2p lending ecosystem agile tax payment gateway e-commerce and ride sharing and travel ecosystem so uh because we redefine the 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 product delivery or the banking product delivery so we can reach so many ecosystem to integrate into the digital ecosystem where BRI is a core of a digital ecosystem. So um, uh, I think it's all for for me. But uh, maybe the last thing that we want to share to you, but uh, 
what is the financial impact? Sorry, I just want to state uh, the financial impact what OpenAPI can has already done uh, last three years. And in the 2020, we can reach the sales volume of more than 45 trillion, FreeBSD income more than 21 uh, billion, with a total transaction more than 88 million. And the total by 2025, it's only done by only five products. Imagine that we can explore the the other API product, we can explore the uh, the other innovative API product and expose it to open API uh, to this open API to 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 partners. So I think it is very very promising in the in the future. And we can say that we are ready to open banking uh, to prepare the 2025 uh, when the Bank Indonesia potential will release the open banking policy. Okay, so mm. thank you, John. Thanks, thanks very much, uh, Yudi, for sharing that perspective. And I guess the the journey you've you've gone through at BRI is uh, initially your initial focus on uh, streamlining internal processes and systems with with APIs uh, has helped you lay the foundation for uh, the um, for, for the next step, which is taking you to API products and then partnering with organisations outside. Both, both within financial services and outside the uh, financial services. So that's uh, that's a great um, that is a great perspective to to share. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, John.